Good day, fellow investors. By reading Ray Dalio's latest book, I gathered 25 investing tips from his book. He he's more focused about the economy, how to manage the crisis, but underneath it all, he is an investor. He's a hedge fund manager, and his goal is to make money in those environments. And by having a similar investing approach to what he said, I derived 25 investing tips from his book. So let's go through them. And I really believe the 25 tips will give you enormous value in your long-term investing career. So the first one, know ahead how you will react with your portfolio, with your portfolio, portfolio actions, no matter what happens. If we read through the book, Ray Dalio says, we used our understanding to build computer decision-making systems that laid out in detail exactly how we'd react to virtually every possible occurrence. So he already knows ahead of times what he will do if something happens. And that's something crucial for us investors to do. So worst case scenario, what do I do? Best case scenario, what do I do? And that makes investing unemotional easy. And when it is unemotional, when it is easy, when it's programmed, you don't do stupid things, which is something that Munger sees at the biggest fault investors usually make. Number two, when you invest across the globe, there is always issues with currencies. So be careful when investing in companies or countries that have a lot of debt in foreign currencies because those are very volatile and those can uh, really, uh, the currency devaluation, foreign debt gets difficult to pay, interest rates might jump higher, and then you have a crisis. And you see all those small crises in emerging markets happen very often because of that. Number three, and do, by reading the book, I have seen a lot of similarities with George Soros's book, Alchemy of Finance, which is all about self-reinforcing cycles. And that self-reinforcing cycle is something that Dalio also elaborates on because it's a common recurrence in the economy. And of course, we all know about the self-reinforcing cycle. It starts at the early part, it goes through a bubble, the bubble pops and we get a recession depression. However, if you're an active investor, so I don't know, one, two percent of the population, we should really take advantage, but only if you're active, if you don't have the time to do that, Ray Dalio says, just be well diversified and that's it. And keep doing the same things all over time. Uh, if you are an active, I think, we can time it. We, I have timed it the last two cycles. So bought low, sold high, bought low, sold high again and again. So if we just follow, but when I say timing, and this is where a lot of viewers get me wrong, I might have started timing it in 2015 and I'm still timing it. So it's impossible to time it perfectly, but it's possible to time the long-term cycle with more hedges, a little bit less overweight on the long side, etc., etc., or different investing style. So uh, if we follow those cycles, we can see the patterns and we can adjust ourselves, our portfolio, balance our portfolio accordingly. This doesn't mean sell everything. This doesn't mean go 100% in gold and all those comments that I usually see. So please understand about portfolio positioning before doing that. And I don't want to encourage that, but from the book I get it is possible to do and Ray Dalio does it. Number four, think uh, where you live. Are you at risk of an inflationary or deflationary recession or crisis? Because that really leads you to a little bit different weights in your portfolio positioning. Also something to talk about in many new videos, I think. The bubble, you might think it is all great, but it's a bubble. Bubbles usually start as over extrapolations of justified bull markets, but low interest rates make investment assets such as stocks and real estate more attractive, so they go up. So all of that makes companies go more, more debt, improved balance sheet, and assets go up in value, net worths and spending income levels rise. Nobody wants to miss out on the action. They entered the market fueling the emergence of a bubble. There is a new shadow banking system. Everybody tries to leverage themselves up and a lot of financial engineering takes place. Read buybacks. The lenders and the 
Speculators make a lot of fast, easy money, which reinforces the bubble by increasing the speculators' equity, giving them collateral they need to secure new loans. Read acquisitions. At the time, most people don't think that it is a problem. To the contrary, they think that what's happening is a reflection and confirmation on the boom. As a result of this dynamic, all sorts of entities build up long positions, borrowing short-term to lend long-term, taking on liquid liabilities to invest in illiquid assets, borrowing in one currency and lending in another to pick up the perceived spread. And then you have a bubble, a self-reinforcing cycle that lasts a few years, then a top about a year, and then we have the crisis. Typical cycle, so be aware of that. Can last longer, can last shorter. Number six, the consensus is priced in the market and what will happen is different that what the majority expects. In markets, when there is a consensus, it gets priced in. However, the future is likely to turn out differently than expected. In other words, human by nature, like most species, tend to move in crowds and weigh recent experience more heavily than is appropriate. Further, bubbles are most likely to occur at the tops in the business cycle, balance of payment cycle, and long-term debt cycle. As a bubble nears its top, the economy is most vulnerable, but people are feeling the wealthiest and the most bullish. Number seven, always understand that central banks lag behind what's going on. While central banks typically do tighten money somewhat and the short rates rise on average when inflation and growth start to get too hot, typical monetary policies are not adequate to manage bubbles because bubbles are occurring in some parts of the economy and not in others. So keep your mind on individual parts of the economy that can trigger a depression. How to take advantage of this? All this reverses when the bubble pops and the same linkages that inflated the bubble make the downturn self-reinforcing. Take advantage of the bubble, but also take advantage of the downward trend. And you can also wait for that trend because it's re self-reinforcing. You can well wait for it to start what Soros is saying. So a lot of questions I get, where we, can we short something? Can we short? Can we short? Can we short? What is the best thing to short now? And I get those questions for the past three years now. Everybody wants to go short. All everyone that went short in the past few years didn't do that well. If we look at it from a self-reinforcing trend perspective, we can wait for the trend to start and then go short and then have a little hedge on what is going on. Number eight, from a depressionary perspective, the richest, the wealthiest buy assets in a crisis, buy gold, buy real estate, buy commodities to protect from their inflationary crisis. So always keep in mind, have some assets. How to spot bubbles? a special video coming so don't invest in the top of the bubble because that's not such a smart thing. Number 10, uh, don't believe in averages. Averages is everything put together in one pot and that, that's the average. However, there is no average person in the world and there is also no average financial system, there is no average stock. Everything is different so be careful of those market averages because something can be way out of that average and something can be way below. So don't focus on the average when you're investing. Investing. Also number 11, when things are too good to be true, it usually is so. And when things are too good to be true, usually tops are being made. So now it looks like the economy is too good to be true. We'll see if it will be a top. Further research is necessary to, let's say, Estimate the probabilities. Ray Dalio is always about probabilities and positioning yourself according to the risk reward. Not about being right. He always looks where he is wrong. So you might think you're right, but always look, okay, what if I'm wrong? And then go back to the first one. What do I do if I'm wrong with my portfolio? It is about the yield curve. Typically in early stages of the top, rise in short interest rates narrows or eliminates the spread with long rates lessening the incentive to lend relative to incentive to hold. As a result of the yield curve being flat or inverted, less borrowing, less collateral, etc., etc., and leads to less lending. Worse financial condition, negative psychology, short-term lending in relation to long-term, less lending, less borrowing, less growth. Early in the top, some parts of the credit system suffer, but others remain robust. 
So it isn't clear that the economy is weakening. So while the central bank is still raising interest rates and tightening credit, the seeds of the recession are being sown. The fastest rate of tightening typically comes about five months prior to the top of the stock market. So let's wait, about, let's wait about the fastest rate of tightening. Number 14, don't forget about how money is created and how it disappears. So money is created whenever you buy something on debt, there is more money, there is debt, that there is credit, and so money is created. However, when parts of those cycle of those chain default, then money simply disappears, asset values go down and everything collaterals disappear and money disappears extremely fast. So even if there is abundance, it's extremely quickly to turn from abound abundance into scarcity. So always think cash is king. So what do we have to understand as investors? We investors only have to understand how the economic machine works and anticipate what will happen next. Easy to say, hard to do, but I think it's possible. 16, as I said, policymakers are slow. Policymakers typically fail to recognize the magnitude of the problem initially, instead of enacting a number of one-off policies that are insufficient to move the needle. So as policymakers are slow on the upside to prevent, they are slow on the down downside to heal. It's only after what is usually a couple of years and a lot of unnecessary economic pain that they finally act decisively. Number 17, have a gold hedge. This is the gold price from the average of the crisis that he has been seeing indexed. So from the top, it goes up to a beautiful deleveraging, but by more than 100%. So as gold prices go up, you might want to think about hedging yourself with a little bit of gold, especially now as we are close to the top. Number 18, prices can't go much higher. So in other words, at higher prices and lower expected returns, the compensation for taking risk becomes too small to get investors to bid up prices, which would drive prospective returns down further. So at some point in the top, it really senses that it's too risky to push prices higher and therefore the sentiment turns and it becomes negative. As always, 19 interest rates are key for asset prices, low interest rates, high asset prices, high interest rates, low asset prices. About emerging markets, buy them where they are not wanted and sell them when they are hot. When things are good, asset prices in local currency plus the currency appreciation are very attractive. That plus the country's hot economic activity encourage more foreign inflows and fewer domestic outflows. Over time, the country becomes the hot place to invest and assets become overbought. Stock bu market bubbles emerge. Investors believe the country's assets are a fabulous treasure to own and that anyone not, not in the country is missing out. However, after the positive, the negative comes. This is the stock market chart from Croatia from below 1000 points in 2000, 2002 when I started investing. I sold 2006-7. 2008 it reached above 5000 points in 2009 it was close to 1200 back in the crisis and then it was stable painfully stable over the last 10 years however play currencies in an appropriate way as said buy when those are cheap buy when nobody wants them because then after the cycle has passed he says he's 12 24 months from the bottom, nobody looks at those countries, nobody wants, they're still in pain from the losses of the past. And then it's time to buy those things because those currencies are cheaper and those economies will benefit from those currencies. This leads also 22, take advantage of the new cycle, typically it takes a few years for the country to recover. However, the country, when all the monetary policy adjustments are made, is back to the early part of the cycle and starts a new virtuous cycle where productive investments opportunities attract capital. Keep in mind the risk though because think okay those countries some countries especially emerging markets will go into hyperinflation Venezuela and then you lose everything. Number 24 if you don't understand this uh, do nothing be happy with diversified stocks bonds we can go to an all-weather portfolio and then simply mechanically adjust according to the risk and you have to learn how to measure the risk that's the key so that's more videos for me to make number 25 if you think you can time the market be ready to 
go against the crowd that's the key you have to do the opposite of what the crowd does because the consensus is priced in and the consensus is usually wrong over the long term so read as much as you can subscribe to this channel if you want more in-depth research on stocks please check my stock market research platform where you can find what i do and how am i building my portfolio for the long term as we are building a model portfolio that will look like an all-weather plus alpha portfolio thank you for watching looking forward to your comments and i'll see you in the next video